an aircraft carrier's deck is one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. The stakes cannot be any higher, and there is no margin for error whatsoever. Fighter jets rely on a catapult system to propel them into air at incredible speeds. This ingeniously designed system allows fighter jets to achieve the speed needed to soar into the skies from the carrier's limited deck space. Usually, these launches go without a hiccup, thanks to the countless hours of training that goes into ensuring a smooth operation. However, as Edward Murphy Jr. famously said, anything that can go wrong will go wrong, and when things do go wrong, disasters can strike. With a catastrophic jolt, the catapult system malfunctioned, leaving the jet stranded at a critical moment. The whole deck erupts into chaos as the crew scrambles for cover, and the pilot only has a few seconds to act. It is a scenario no one hopes to experience, but for one, everyone is extensively trained and prepared. At the core of aircraft carrier operations lies the catapult system, designed to launch 50,000-pound jets into the skies in a few meters, which is otherwise impossible. Watching this system in action is a work of fiction and a breathtaking display of precision. This marvel of engineering showcases the ingenuity of naval technology, but like every complex system, it is not immune to failure. Over time, wear and tear of components can cause malfunction that can lead to devastating outcomes. In the next few minutes, we will dwell a lot deep into the insane engineering behind these catapult systems and what happens when it ceases to function during a launch. We will go over the dramatic incidents that have happened on USS Nimitz and USS Theodore Roosevelt, and how those events have shaped the Navy into developing safer and more resilient systems which are now the hallmark of naval engineering. This is a story of determination, innovation, and relentless pursuit of improvement, so stay with us to see how challenges have turned into progress. A typical runway used by the Air Force on the land is about 5,000 to 7,500 feet long, which is around the size of 14 to 21 football fields combined. In contrast, the deck of an aircraft carrier is only a few meters long when compared with the same pitch. It brings the ratio to 114 or 121. To top things off, fighter pilots have to launch from a platform that is moving at speed more than 30 knots. And if all of that was not hard enough, the jets have to maintain speed of 150 miles per hour to clear the deck safely. Let that all sink in for a second. The catapult system plays a key role to ensure a smooth launch. Without it, the idea of propelling a 50,000-pound jet at speeds over 150 miles per hour would be impossible. This technological masterpiece combines immense strength with precise engineering. The catapult system uses a steam electromagnetic mechanism to hurl fighter jets into the sky. It takes only a few seconds for them to launch a fighter jet into the flight, covering only about 300 feet, less than the length of a city block. Let us explain how it works. The jet is brought to connect with a catapult shuttle via a launch bar on its nose gear. Once it is snagged in, the system builds up enormous energy, traditionally through steam pressure, but now an electromagnetic system is being employed. As the jet gets ready to be launched, this energy is released, which propels the jet at astonishing speed. As the shuttle moves down the track, sensors monitor metrics like wind speed, aircraft type, and weight to adjust the force automatically and ensure a safe takeoff. Day after day, this indispensable system allows naval aviators to take on one of the most challenging jobs on the planet with remarkable confidence. It is more than just a piece of equipment. It's a lifeline that ensures enormous operational challenges of aircraft carriers are met with unmatched precision, resilience, and safety. While these systems have been exceptionally successful, it is not to say that they are without risks. The immense force required to propel a jet can also wear and tear the equipment inside the system. Although regular inspections and maintenance are routine on carriers, failures can happen. In rare cases, the catapult system can misfire or fail to release the shuttle properly, creating a potentially deadly situation. It can leave the jet stranded at speeds that are not enough to take off, but also not too slow to bring the jet to a stop. Sometimes, the system may also leave the jet stranded mid-deck, and pilots only have split seconds to decide on life or death matter. Situations like these test the safety systems and the crew's training to their limits. It has been more than a century since the first aircraft carrier, the HMS Hermes, was commissioned in 1918. 
Over the course of the century, naval aviation technology has come a long way, and things have also gone wrong on several occasions. However, two incidents stand out as they played a vital role in shaping up the modern catapult technology that is now employed on modern Nimitz-class aircraft carriers. On May 19, 2005, the USS John F. Kennedy, a Kitty Hawk-class aircraft carrier, was on a routine training exercise in the Atlantic Ocean. The carrier was about 100 nautical miles off the coast of Florida, and engaged in launching and retrieving dozens of jets rapidly to similar high-tempo combat operations. An F-14 Tomcat, piloted by an expert aviator who had more than 600 carrier takeoffs to his name, was scheduled to be launched. Everything seemed smooth when the jet was brought to be hooked to the catapult system. All routine pre-flight checks were carried out, and the catapult officers gave a green signal to the pilot. However, just as the jet began accelerating, the catapult experienced a sudden power failure. It left the Tomcat without adequate speed for the liftoff, plunging it over the ship's bow and forcing the pilot and radar intercept officer to eject into the ocean. Rescue teams were deployed swiftly, including helicopters and rescue boats to recover the crew. While both officers survived sustaining minor injuries, the catapult system, jet, and the takeoff strip were significantly damaged. Flight operations had to be suspended for 72 hours, and the incident incurred loss of millions of dollars to the Navy. Also, the training exercises were completed after a major delay. A similar incident also happened on USS Nimitz on June 16, 2011 during a series of training drills in the Pacific Ocean. However, this time it was an FA-18C Hornet, which was lined up for the launch, and like the previous situation, everything seemed in order until the Hornet was engaged. Just as the Hornet started accelerating, the mechanical failure caused the shuttle to detach prematurely, propelling the jet with insufficient speed for a takeoff. The pilot instinctively tried to pull the jet into the air by pulling full throttle, but he had to eject as the aircraft couldn't maintain the altitude. Resultantly, the jet crashed into the water just off the carrier bow, creating a massive fireball and sending flying debris onto the deck. While the pilot was rescued quickly, the jet was completely destroyed and the flying debris caused significant damage to the aircraft carrier. Fortunately, no crew member was injured, but the psychological impact on the crew was significant. Many reported heightened sense of anxiety and resorted to even more safety precautions during the takeoff. Both of these incidents highlight the weakness of the catapult system. Following the failures, the Navy launched a detailed inquiry and improved protocols for the catapult system. Some carriers transitioned from the traditional catapult system to the newer electromagnetic systems. These advances have made launches safer, more reliable, and ensure the legacy of the Navy continues to thrive with great resilience and precision. While the events described above are rare, they can be devastating and potentially fatal. Hence, the Navy has devised extensive protocols to handle these situations should they happen. With lives at stake, every second counts. Every crew member, system, and procedure are a part of a comprehensive plan to handle emergencies. Let's take a look at how the Navy really takes control in chaos. Quick reactions of the crew make the difference between a contained emergency and a catastrophic disaster. Like the event mentioned earlier, as the catapult experienced failure, the crew instinctively dropped to the ground and moved to the designated safe zone, a reflex built in them thanks to the rigorous safety exercises. This maneuver plays a key role in preventing injuries amidst flying debris and limits injuries. Despite the violent crash, the immediate reaction of the crew saves lives. Once the threat is over, the crew members quickly transition to damage control and the first priority is always the injured sailors. After ensuring their own safety, the crew members rescue the injured sailors and ensure no further harm comes their way. The jets on the deck and other equipment are saved afterwards. Emergency response teams, trained in triage and medical care, are mobilized to care for the injured, while maintenance teams start working on isolating and fixing the damaged system to prevent secondary failure that can complicate the situation. As the threat is contained, a detailed analysis and review of the situation is conducted almost immediately to identify the root cause and rectify it as soon as possible. It typically involves inspection of the catapult system, assessing the condition of its components, and analysis of operational logs to see if any warnings or signs had been missed. 
The lessons learned from each incident are then incorporated into crew's training to ensure the incident never happens again. The moment the catapult system fails, the pilot has to make a decision that makes the difference between life and death. This decision has to be taken in a split second and is a true test of the pilot's capabilities, instincts, and the training they have received over the years. Pilots only have two choices, eject or attempt an emergency takeoff, and none of these options is a guaranteed success. You may think ejection is a safer option, but it comes with significant risks. While the jet may not achieve takeoff speed, it is still traveling with a lot of velocity, and the pilot is just a few hundred feet above the sea. It doesn't give enough time to pilots to open their parachute, and even if they manage to open it, the distance between them and ground is too narrow to guarantee a safe landing. Such ejections have happened, and they have not been very successful for both the pilot and the machine. The relatively safer and more reliable option is to try an emergency takeoff. It is likely to succeed because, unlike Air Force pilots, the Navy trains their pilots to handle situations when the liftoff doesn't go as planned and the jet doesn't achieve the necessary momentum. The pilots throttle the jet to a maximum speed to achieve enough momentum to clear the deck and possibly take off as well. In the best case scenarios, the jet takes off, but even in the worst case, it makes ejection relatively easier. If the pilots attempt ejection while the jet is still on the deck, they will land back on the hard platform, risking serious injuries. Clearing the deck allows the pilots to land in the ocean, which is a far safer option. That said, the success of either option depends on exactly which stage the catapult system fails. If it fails at a later stage, the pilots usually have enough momentum to take off the plane. In contrast, if it fails in the initial stage, pilots can attempt a controlled abort. However, the problem arises when it fails in the mid-stage, because at that point the speed is not enough for takeoff and not too slow for a controlled abort. Pilots train extensively for such scenarios in state-of-the-art simulators that replicate the complexities of launching from aircraft carriers. These simulators are programmed to include a range of failure scenarios, from engine malfunction to catapult gear failure, ensuring pilots are prepared for every eventuality. The responses are embedded in their instincts, which become second nature when they encounter similar situations in real time. Aircraft carriers are built with such incidents in mind and feature multiple layers of redundancy to handle emergencies. For starters, the catapult systems have emergency power backups and hydraulics to ensure a safe takeoff even if the primary component fails. In extreme cases, when the catapult system experiences complete failure, protocols are designed to minimize risk. Jet blast deflectors are one of these measures, which are placed behind the jet at the time of takeoff. While they are primarily designed to shield the deck crew from the extreme heat coming off the jet's exhaust, these deflectors also serve as a secondary safety feature, redirecting energy and debris in the event of a failure. Advanced monitoring systems are also incorporated into the catapult system, which are vital in the detection of issues before they escalate. Sensors embedded in the system measure the hydraulic pressure, tension, and other metrics constantly to provide real-time data to the maintenance teams. This is a proactive approach that helps identify potential issues early so they can be rectified to prevent catastrophes. Preparedness is the holy grail of carrier operations. Flight deck crews and fighter pilots participate in regular drills to simulate a range of emergency scenarios, ensuring the teams can react instinctively in a real-time crisis. Such drills include fires, cable failures, even simulated aircraft crashes, all designed to simulate the high-stress environment of an actual incident. The flight deck crew is divided into several teams, each dedicated to a special task. In the event of a crisis, these teams are trained for rapid response and coordination. Dedicated teams clear the decks, offer medical aid, and repair damaged systems, all while working under intense pressure. Each team is trained using simulations that replicate real-time problems they will encounter during a crisis. Such exercises are not just about individual performance. They emphasize teamwork and communication. The crew must act as a cohesive unit, and this can be executed only when each member performs their assigned role. The intense training makes sure that when the unexpected happens, the crew and pilots can rely on their skills and instincts to navigate their way out of it. The landscape of naval aviation is evolving at a rapid pace, and catapult technology has to keep up with it. 
emerging trends of unmanned aerial vehicles, hypersonic aircraft, and stealth fighter jets present new challenges so the catapult system must adapt accordingly. Lighter aircraft like drones require much less force, so the system has to adapt to apply less force to ensure safe liftoff without damaging them. In contrast, it has to apply much higher force when it comes to retrieving hypersonic jets. It is for this reason the Department of Defense spends billions of dollars in research and development to develop new materials and technologies. Carbon composites and nanomaterials are being studied for their potential to create stronger and more flexible components while being lighter at the same time. Integration of AI into the sensors that detect the various metrics while the jet snags onto the system is also being tested, which will allow predictive maintenance and autonomous adjustment during takeoff. The evolution of catapult systems exemplifies the ingenuity and foresight that defines naval engineering. Continuous innovation and training ensure efficiency and safety while preparing for the new challenges. Whether it is the integration of real-time monitoring, the adoption of emails, or the exploration of new materials, catapult technology remains at the heart of aviation technology. This is it for today's video. We hope it has been informative and fun. Stay connected with us as we are doing a series of how the U.S. Navy has been dealing with the notorious Somalian pirates. We also have more videos in the pipeline discussing various aspects of aircraft carriers that have not been explored before. So, don't forget to subscribe and make sure to like, comment, and share to help our reach. Thank you, and we will see you in the next one.